Illustrator has an option to quickly and almost painlessly and effortlessly create 3D shapes from your 2D objects. And there's three different ways that you can create these shapes. There's this thing called Extrude and Bevel, which I think is the most realistic looking one. There's Revolve, which also creates really interesting effects. And then there's Rotate, which is almost like a skew. It doesn't seem too 3D to me, but anyway, it's there. So we'll start with this first option and this first star. You'll go to the Effect menu, choose 3D, and there's the first option, Extrude and Bevel. And when you have that selected, the dialog box pops open, and it allows you to make selections that modify the way your 2D art looks as a 3D shape. So the first thing that you would do before you do anything else, although this could slow your computer down noticeably, is turn your preview button on so you can actually see that 3D extrusion either with or without the bevel. You can choose any of these positions for your object. So if you wanted to flip between particular positions, this one will give you accurate flippings. Put it back to the front. You could also click in here. Now notice these are all at zero degrees. And this is the X, the Y, and the Z axis of your object. I prefer actually clicking and dragging the object here in 3D space. And notice as you click and drag, you get this outline view of your object. So it can show you like a little preview without the color of the object and its rotation. And when you have it the way you like it, you just release. So you can plug in any of those values here if you happen to know you might have a precise angle that you wanted to use or uh, change the perspective like so. I'm just going to put that back to zero degrees. You can also control the extrude and the bevel. By default, the depth is set to 50 points, but you can use this slider to increase it. Woo, really big if you wanted. And that's not even the biggest you can go. I mean, you can go all the way up to 2000. I'm not going to show you that because it's massive. It's going to fly off the artboard. But you, you know, maybe somewhere around 50 to 100 would be cool. Let's do 60. And the other thing is this option here, the cap. You can have a solid 3D shape or you can have a hollow 3D shape. And depending on your needs and your object and the angle and rotation, you may prefer to have the hollow appearance. We're going to work with the capped version so we can see it like it's one solid shape with no center. You can also apply a bevel to your 3D shape. Right now it's set to none, but there are several different bevels that you can choose from. And once you select a bevel, you can modify the height. So right now it's only set to four, but we could certainly increase it by clicking and dragging here. You could also change whether it's a bevel in or a bevel out just by clicking on the different buttons and that changes the way the image looks. Let's try a couple more. So there's something called Cove, something called Jaggy. It almost looks like stacked stars rather than a bevel. Rolling, rounded. Let's go back with that classic. In addition, you can control the surface shading. The default shading is plastic shading, but there are other options. You can choose wireframe, and maybe you want to create a wireframed object on your artboard. You could choose no shading. You can choose diffuse, and diffuse is really a lot like plastic. So if you're not sure which one, I would just leave it at plastic. There are more options if you click the more options button and that increases the size of the dialog box. Here you can modify the surface. Again, there's a wireframe, shading, diffuse, and plastic. So this whole little area expanded with all these other options. You can click and drag to adjust the light source. So where you put that will determine sort of the depth and shading of the areas away from the light source. You can modify the light intensity, ambient light, highlight intensity, etc. all of these things. And when you have everything the way you like it, you can just click OK. I'm going to do fewer options and click OK. Now we'll do the second version, which is to revolve. Create your artwork. Go to Effect, 3D, Revolve. Turn on your preview option so you can see your art. And if you wanted to adjust the angle of your artwork, just click and drag. So if you're going to do any 3D rendering, uh, maybe you're an interior decorator and you like to do a 3D rendering of your designs to show to your customer, 
This would be a great way to create objects that look like they have three dimensionality to them. So click and drag. All of the same options are here for you. The X, Y, and Z perspective. You can choose the revolve angle as well as whether it's a hollow or cap. That probably wouldn't work for this particular shape, but there's offset and you can do offset from the left or the right edge like so. And what this does, it looks like it offsets the from the center point of the object and then rotates around that space. So you could create some super strange looking shapes based on your original shape, depending on how you have the offset set. So I'm going to bring it all the way down back to zero. And then again, when you have everything the way you like it, you click OK. Now I've created another shape here, and we're going to do the same thing because I want to show you something else that changes with this type of 3D effect. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to uh, drag a copy off. So there's my original. Now, if I were to rotate, just by putting my cursor on the edges of the bounding box, and rotate that shape, look how it's changing the revolve. It's completely changing the look of it. So you could start with one shape, and just by rotating it, completely change the integrity or the look of it. And if we were to drag in the opposite direction, we get this weird funny shape, almost like this smushed in little vase or like a really smushed in Hershey's green Hershey's kiss or something like that. Anyway, it looks like this little bloop, this little drop. So the angle of your shape will determine the look of that revolve, which is pretty awesome. And that last option here under 3D effect to rotate really just rotates your 2D object in space. There is no bevel happening. There's no 3D thing happening. You can either say no shading or diffuse shading, but that's pretty much it. Just click and drag to rotate it. You can see the wireframe of your original while you're dragging like before and the outline of the original position of your star, something like this for the star. You could probably do this yourself. You wouldn't need to rotate it, but if you wanted to skew it in space, it might be easier to conceive of the angle by looking at the 3D cube rather than sort of doing it by hand and eyeballing it. You also may want to rotate something at a particular angle so that it fits on top of a drawing at a particular angle. So that's where it could be good. Now, you could map artwork onto a 3D shape in Illustrator. You would have to first create your artwork, and then before you can use it, you would have to turn your artwork into a symbol. So I've created some artwork here, and I'll just simply grab it and drop it into my symbols panel one at a time. I'll just call this one stars, and for this one I'll just call it dots. And for this last one, I'm going to put this one on the lamp, so I'm just going to call it shade for the lamp shade. And then once you have those symbols ready to go, you just have to go back into the object to map the art. So how do you get back there? Well, in the appearance panel, down at the bottom of the panel dock, you have all of the settings that go into making your selected object. So you see your stroke, you see your fill, and if you scroll down here, you can also see that special effect, that 3D extrude and bevel. So you can click to edit the effect and bring yourself back into this dialog box. And if you want to apply artwork to the object, all you have to do is click on this Map Art button, and this other dialog box comes open, asking you which surface you'd like to apply your artwork to. You can tell which surface is selected because this is the star, so there's the front and the back, and then there's all these different planes, there's bevels, there's sides, front and back, etc. But if you look at your selection, the area outlined in red is the area that you would be applying the mapped art to. So all you have to do is go to the symbol menu and choose the artwork that you would like to apply. So I'd like to apply the stars to the front of the star. So it will take your artwork and drop it right on top of the shape. You could also use this option here to fit your pattern to the surface, so you can scale it to fit. Other options are to do invisible geometry or shade the artwork to, so you can see which plane that you're working on. And then what you could do is you can toggle through these one at a time until you find the planes that you wanted to add the artwork to. So some of those are invisible to us. We don't need those. Oh, but there's one that we could apply artwork to. 
So here maybe we want to put the dots and we'll just scroll again to the next plane and select the dots and scroll to the next plane and select the dots and so forth and so on. So let's say I go through all this trouble and I go, well, I don't really like the dots. I could remove them so I could do a clear or a clear all and then just go reapply my stars. But since I'm here and I only applied it to three of the sides, I might as well just go do that individually, clear them one at a time. And when I'm happy, click OK and click OK again. And now I've just mapped artwork onto the front surface of that star. So we could do the same thing here with this shape. Again, into the appearance panel, clicking on that 3D revolve option, show my preview, map art, and now I just need to find the right surface. So not that one. We'll just scroll through these until we find it. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. That one. Okay, so now we'll go and grab our shade. And we could say scale to fit. So it's applying it to the outer edges. And if you wanted to, you can adjust how it's falling on your object. So maybe we would want it to go a little bit lower or a little bit higher, something like that. Maybe we want to give it like a little line. And when you're happy, click OK and click OK again. And now you've successfully mapped artwork onto your 3D shapes.